Um, to kick things off, uh, my name is Michael Hard. I'm the um, SDSU University Program Director for Ensign, which is a national security innovation network. We're a, uh, a Pentagon level uh, US Department of Defense uh, innovation uh, program office. And it's uh, I, I'm delighted to introduce you to my uh, really great colleagues that are uh, stationed over in our DC office. Um, we have uh, Alex Dieters on the line and then also uh, Dana Sanford. And they both lead uh, a lot of our um, our uh, national service uh, uh, um, uh, uh, programs and opportunities, which are all designed to create uh, opportunities uh, for all of the different students across our nationwide network, including SDSU students, uh, to provide them with uh, new opportunities to solve uh, real world uh, national security problems. So Dana, Alex, it's really great to have you on the line. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Thanks for having us today. And, uh, and to all you join in today, um, thanks for your time and, and thanks for dialing in today. I know it's a busy time of year um, in, in a lot of ways and there's a lot going on in the world right now. So thanks for carving out some time to, to attend this session. And uh, yeah, we're definitely excited to, to chat with you all today. And really the, the format for today is we have a few slides and really this is just to sort of paint the picture of what this program is and what the opportunity um, is for you all. Um, and then we really kind of want to open it up to more of a free flowing discussion. And um, we've got this set up right now as a webinar, but you can go ahead and, and drop your, uh, there's like a QA and a box in there. And so feel free to drop your questions in there. We're going to monitor that. And then if you have any, you know, dialogue you want to put in the chat, feel free, but drop your particular questions in there. And then we can also, I think, pull in a few people at a time if you want to get on, on video and, and uh, have a more free flowing dialogue, happy to do so. Um, but yeah, like Michael said, uh, by way of introduction, I'm Dana Sanford. I'm the program manager for uh, for our program called X Force. Um, along with Alex, we run this program uh, together. And really, what what uh, X Force is is you know Michael kind of mentioned uh, Ensign, the National Security Innovation Network. So big picture, um, how we look to solve national security problems, um, and we take a you know really human capital approach to doing that by building networks of innovators across academia industry in the military. And we have a variety of different ways that we help kind of form groups uh, in, in networks amongst those three different groups to solve problems. We have a bunch of different programs by which we do that. One of those is called X-Force. In X-Force, what we really look to do is we source problems from military commands. Um, and those those problems are generally looking for a rapid early stage solution to, the, to that particular problem. Um, and then what we do is we source talent from universities from across the country uh, to work on those problems for a summer and for a for a, a for a fellowship period, really from early June until mid to to, to late August. Uh, we form teams uh, with the right skill sets to solve those problems uh, and work, um, you, you know, and deliver a solution for the uh, for the customer, the military problem. Pro project sponsor uh, at the end of this that. So I'll get into the details a little bit more in, in a few here, but we'll kind of jump into on um, the next couple of slides out. So if you can kind of flip through here, um, I kind of mentioned some of this already. Like I said, the real end state here is to have more of a dialogue and some, some questions here. Um, like I said, the big picture with Ensign is, you know, we are really kind of like developing these networks, right, uh, of, of innovators and, and bringing the human capital part of uh, delivering um, solutions to our to our customers. Um, and, you know, kind of big picture a long time ago, you, you know, the, um, the Department of Defense realized that, you know, like, how do we how do we sort of continue to innovate and out innovate and outpace our, our enemies and our peers and our, you know, near peer threats that are out there. And technology is one of the ways to do that. But then the, there's always the people part, right? That's that's that will always be there. And how do we get great people to solve tough problems? And that's really the way, the reason why Ensign exists. Um, it's really exciting too, is because we bring bring great people like you all, you know, to to bring your problems and your your, your I mean your experience and your skills against these problems we have. So, anyways, that's sort of the reason for being of, of why Ensign exists. If you flip to the next slide, Alex, uh, one of the things that the way, as I mentioned, the way that we do that, um, we kind of look at it as like a sort of a new model for national security. We got three portfolios by which we do that. Um, X Force is inside of our national service portfolio, and that's really kind of developing like new pathways um, for people to serve, right? And and so, um, you, you know, you can see the picture there. It gets some Marines with rucksacks on, and 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 uh, that's our traditional mental model for how we serve. And that's you got to put a uniform on to do it. 
but part of what what Ensign exists for, and really the National Service portfolio, is that that's that's not it. There's other ways to serve as well, and and what we are doing is creating different pathways to do that. So X Force is an example of that, where over a summer you can come and serve, uh, and and you don't get to put a uniform on to do it. You don't get to raise your right, right hand, repeat after me, and and put the uniform on for the next four years. You can do it and, and help your country uh, solve really tough national security problems over the course of a summer, right? And that's that's and, and it's just many programs by which we do that, but that's this. X Force is one of them. We have two other uh, portfolios, um, also full of some great programs: collaboration and acceleration. Um, and you can read what it says there. But collaboration is really about collision events, and where we in, in these in these finite periods of time where we bring either you know service members or those from the startup community or those from academia, kind of put them all into the same location at the same time to help deliver again these really unique and creative uh, uh, solutions to tough problems. And then where acceleration is really uh, offering programs that that look at a lot more in the dual use venture uh, side of things. So you know, like it serves the military, but then also you're an existing product or service that's out there that serves you know the general population, but can also serve the military as well. So those are really kind of the three ways that we do that. Um, and again, I won't spend too much time here, so we can preserve our time for to talk about X Force. This slide, I think we can kind of skip through. Just sort of mentions what I, what I what I already talked about. Um, but here we'll kind of dive into the next couple of slides, at least a little bit more about X Force and what it is as a program. And before we open it up for more Q and A, um, so as I mentioned, it's a, it's a fellowship. It runs from early June until mid to late August. Um, we've grown almost by 100% the last three years as far as the size of the fellowship. Um, last year, we were at about 140 uh, total participants and fellows. Like this year, we'll be up to about 250. Um, it's 12 weeks long. The teams are about three to five uh, students in total, and they're, the teams are composed of either overlapping or uh, complementary skill sets. So it's really driven by the project that we source from the military command, and we'll get into some of the, what those things look like. But if it's a website, or it's a new mobile app, or it's a data analysis problem, or it's a policy problem, we'll look for, based off of our applicant pool to the fellowships, okay, who, who best meets that? Uh, who best meets those needs and do we need overlapping skills meaning like we need multiple programmers we need multiple designers we need multiple policy uh experts um, or do we need a policy expert a ui ux person and a developer and that's the team right so that we look at combining those teams in different ways in order to deliver what the customer is uh, looking for ultimately um so those are kind of like the big picture things of the fellowship um, and, and during the fellowship, like I said, it's 12 weeks. Now, I will say this is sort of just an underlying um, um, uh, planning factor. Last summer, um, this picture was actually taken from last summer, but that was a, an exception to the way, actually the way the program was delivered. We had to do it all virtual last year, uh, obviously because of COVID uh, and the safety risk and concern. And uh, so we, so the good news is we delivered at a really high rate. We had a really high acceptance rate by our, our the uh problems, uh, the, the solutions that were delivered to our customers, uh, which was really good, but it was done almost completely virtually. This year, the way the vaccine looks to be going, we're hoping that this thing can be, if not fully in person, at least a portion of it will be in person. Uh, but all that to say that our, our students, our fellows last year had a really good experience. We had really good feedback, um, really, really good uh, overall, you know, what they delivered was really good and really high quality, even though it was, it was, it was virtual in nature. So um if you can flip over the next slide alex um so here's like kind of what you get out of it right so as a as a student you know and you know being where you're at right now um what's in it for you why would you want to take you know because life is sort of all about trade-offs and especially where you all are at right now and sort of your careers you've got choice over the summer and why is it important for you um, and the way I, I kind of look at this is is these these bullet points are, are pretty important here to me um but one, it's it's you've been learning a lot in school. You're developing these skill sets that you have, and 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 this is an opportunity to put those skills uh, to a problem that really needs your skills, right? And so our customers, we call them customers, but these are our project sponsors from from the military side. They come to us because they're looking for a different way to solve their problem, right? And and so like, you know, my background is mostly in, in the military and, and I, I'm still in the reserves and the Marine Corps. And we've got a particular way that we solve problems. We got a particular way that we've been trained on solving these problems, not right or wrong, it's just it's our way of doing it. Now, you are coming from this with a different set of skills and a different approach and different problem solving mental models. And we bring those together, that's where the magic happens, right? You know, so I will tell you right now, 
is that is that what you bring to the table is incredibly valuable and you're helping solve problems that really help save people's lives okay and I'll, i can tell you that like firsthand because I've, I've seen it um and that's why i'm really you know passionate about this program and what we do here because you make a huge difference um so when you bring your skill sets to the play like we need that okay on the military side you know we, we we really genuinely need it um and so you get that you get the, the the opportunity really to kind of serve your country you know over the summer take your skills that you're learning in school or you're, you've refined in school that you already had and you're making somebody's life better you're making you know their work better you're making their their quality of life better you're protecting the force you're doing all sorts of great things so that's that's number one the second thing I'd throw out there is that um, you get access to like this really big sort of DOD network, right? You know, there's all sorts of, as I said, sort of dual use, like like we've had, you know, uh, teams that start their own company after this, after their experience here, because they'd say like, hey, wow, this technology, um, you, you know, could be really, you know, both good in the civilian sector, it could be good for the military, we should start our own company. That happens, like that. that's a, that's an output from this. You're growing your network as a result of this. So that the N in and Ensign, the National Security Innovation Network, right? You know, the second N, um, um, you're building your network as you're part participating in this. And one of the things that Alex and I and the, and the team have worked really hard to do is that, so I'm a dad, I got two daughters, so I wouldn't be proper without me throwing in a dad joke here and there. Uh, but the big thing is like, when you participate in this program and you become an alumni of X-Force, um, you know, the difference between us and, and when you graduate from your school is like, you'll get all the benefits of being an alumni, but we won't ever ask you for money, right? You know, so you're gonna build your network. You're gonna build those that you have connections with. That's gonna help you later on in life with jobs and 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 whatnot as you, you know, grow this network on LinkedIn and whatnot. So that that's a thing, right? That is a sort of byproduct from your participation here. Um, things we're offering this year too is really we're working with a, one of our you know sister organizations, the Naval X, uh, and they they have this human centered design, warfighter centered design sort of training program where you help really solve problems, understand the customer's needs, what are they really getting at, having a very deliberate and intentional process by which to uh, solve those problems. We're injecting that, um, and Alex and I will actually be going through that training ourselves here in a, in a few weeks. Um, so you'll have that as part of your experience. And then, um, you know, I think what's, what's, what's really interesting too is like mentorship we build into this. Well, yeah, you've got people like Michael that have a tremendous amount of experience in the startup world and the venture community. And so he's bringing that into, you know, mentoring the teams and the, and the student teams as you go through here. And that's really invaluable. And that's, you know, kind of part of the, you know, the one of the tangible benefits of, of being part of this program. And then, um, you know, the professional development piece, you know, I think we've had, I, I got to sit through, um, an outbrief a couple of weeks ago from students we had at UC Berkeley. And, and, and though one of the benefits of this program is that you get to sort of experience this and then you, you know, potentially you decide to become a, you know, a scientist inside of the government or, you know, one of our, you know, uh, research labs inside of the military is, you know, an output. But sometimes it's like, you know, I saw some students at UC Berkeley that they just graduated last semester and they're going to work in, you know, Silicon Valley. They're going to work for Slack and, um, you know, Facebook and, and some of these other startups. But some of the feedback that they got was like, hey, if it wasn't for this program, I never really would have put my skills to the test, gotten the confidence that I needed and grown as both a, you know, a, a, a technician uh, and a leader to be ready to take this, you know, pretty, pretty challenging job in the private sector. So it's that, right? You know, like you see, those are the type of professional development experiences that I think you get out of this program. So anyways, those are just a few of the things that I think are important, like sort of the what's in it for you, you know, type, type of uh, takeaway here. So um, so, okay, like, what do you, what do the problems look like? And what do you, kind, of, kind of things can you work on? There's a lot, okay? And this is just kind of scratching the surface, um, you, you know, but you can, you guys can kind of read through these two that are on the screen right now. Um, I'll talk about a couple others, but we've got everything from cybersecurity, you know, working with the NSA. Uh, we've got problems that we've worked with Cybercom, or, you know, um, in uh, out of Fort Meade in Maryland, not too far from where I live. Uh, we've got problems that involve building new uh, mobile apps uh, for the New York National Guard. Um, we had projects where we had huge quantities of data analysis um, for uh, Shepard Air Force Base in, in, in Texas. And, and so, um, and that's just, again, kind of scratching the surface. So we added a team um, last summer supporting it, you know, one of our customers down in um, it, it, uh, at Camp Pendleton in California. Um, it was basically like kind of building a drone from scratch with commercial off-the-shelf products. Uh, and it was really neat to see, again, the team was virtual and they were, you know, buying products off of Amazon, shipping them to one person, doing some soldering, connect, you know, putting things together, sending them to somebody else, doing the testing. And it was just really, really cool to see the way things came together. 
Um, and so, yeah, like I said, we've got everything from cyber problems, like you'll see up here on the screen, research problems, policy problems. We had one uh, that was pretty interesting last summer um, from a, a National Guard unit um, that was looking at uh, pregnancy and promotion policy, right? You know, so when when uh, somebody goes out on maternity leave uh, in the time that they're away from the job, you know, are they losing um, promotion potential as a result of like their time away from the job? And how do you put a policy in place to make sure that doesn't happen? You're not being penalized for starting a family. And so like, those are life-changing things, career-changing things are going to keep, you know, people in the military and in uniform longer because the career is, is, is balanced well for the, and, and in harmony with their family goals and their professional goals. And like that student team, like made a difference, not just on, on, you know, for really kind of generations to come in a, in a lot of ways. So that's the impact uh, that, that our fellows have and, and, and the things that can be done over the summer um, in really just a, a three month period of time. So, uh, so anyways, yeah, those are kind of like the big things. And Alex, I don't know if we get any more slides after that, or if this is the last one, but um, so I'll, I'll stop there and, and like I said um, Michael was gracious enough to, to give you know Alex and I the opportunity to come and talk to you all today um, and and I, I really any questions that you have I'd love to dig in love to answer anything we can take you guys off of mute we can you know, pull you in on, on video if you'd like or you can drop it in the Q&A section uh, but happy to use this time to, to dig into whatever you'd like I have our first question here if uh, people with military and government backgrounds are invited um, by exception in quote are there any examples of skill sets or backgrounds that might be an exception? Yeah, and so here's that's a, that's a great question, and um, you know the way that we kind of look at, and I'll, I'll give you the big picture first, and then I'll drill down into um, to, to get to the to, the specific you know question there is um, you probably remember like early on when I talked about like our national service portfolio and how we're kind of creating new pathways for service. Um, and so one of the reasons why this program exists is like very typically like, um, so the, I'll put it this way, this program was not created for me, right? You know, like, so I got out of college, I went directly into the Marine Corps, I spent, you know, time on active duty and then time in the reserves. So like I, I sort of like get the DOD and how to navigate it, right? And, and so, um, and, and so the program's not really like for somebody for me that knows what levers to pull, how to get into the DOD, I've sort of created a network there already, um, but it's actually more created for the person like that, that typically would graduate from college and they would go work into a consumer facing product or service type industry. Um, and, and those skill sets are tremendously valuable. Their experience is tremendously valuable, but it's pointed towards the, the commercial side of things, which is great, but we need that here, right? You know, so that's why we're trying to say like, hey, you all that would typically not come and, and think about, you know, supporting the, and, and working inside the national security arena, take a, take a look, right? You know, take a, take a second look. So that's where we're sort of like, you know, opening up boat spaces for those type of folks where those that have been in the military have served in the military have sort of already been there and know it and know what levers to pull on and who to talk to. They've got a network, perhaps they know where to apply for jobs. They know either the big consulting firms or they know how to get a government job, things like that. That's big picture. Okay. So that's why when I say like, Hey, by exception, it's really just, so we can sort of cater to and sort of bring in the folks that have never really even considered the national security arena as a potential career opportunity. But to talk about like by exception, we definitely accept lots of uh, what we call like non new entrants or, or people that have been in, in the military before that have served before. Right. And, and, uh, and, and so that doesn't mean it's off the table at all, but we had, you know, lots of fellows last summer that were either prior enlisted prior service or headed into service. Um, and, and, uh, and we've seen some actually get hired, you know, and, and to change your career path based off of that. That's, that's all good. Um, but then, so by exception, let me, let me actually answer that question by kind of giving you a big picture perspective of like what by exception means and who we're looking for, for actually fellows to, to begin with. And this might be good. There's kind of a, a few different categories we look at. And those of you who've gone through the application already may have seen this. Number one is we're looking for people that are service oriented to begin with, right? Like you want to serve your country, you want to serve your community, you want to make a difference in the world, you want to make an impact. And that's sort of like your heart being in the service, uh, sort of pointed in that direction is kind of what we're looking for, right? So you've already served, good, right? You get that, you get that track record there. What else are you doing in your, in your community? What else are you doing on, on campus? Like that sort of holistic picture of service is, is really, really good. The second thing is like, and a lot of you that are gonna apply for this sort of like check this box being with like, do you get the technical chops 
that, that we need and we're looking for also, right? So meaning, uh, do you get the coursework? Do you have like the, the experience outside of the coursework? Um, do you get the skill set to, to be able to perform and make a difference on these projects as well? So to that question, you know, like to, you know, um, you know, by exception, you know, what, what are you looking for? Like, do you have the skills necessary to make an impact on the type of projects that we're sourcing from our military commands? Then the third thing, you know, that I'll throw out there that we really look for is this sort of entrepreneurial spirit that, that a person has, right? You know, like, and, and, and so um, what, what things do you do? So you've got your coursework um, and then what do you do outside of that, right? Do you participate in hackathons? You do participate in, you know, clubs or sports on campus. Do you participate in any kind of volunteer things, um, you know, service oriented type things, you know, above and beyond, you know, sort of the basics of which required you. Have you started your own company? Do you do, you know, projects in, in above and beyond your, your, um, uh, your required coursework, right? So those three things from service to the technical skill set, and by technical, I also mean like if it's a policy problem, like you, you, you've done that as well. It's not just all, you know, programming and coding and, and things like that. It's also, you know, other, other skill sets as well. And then the last part of that sort of entrepreneurial spirit. So when you put those three things together, I hope that answers the question about like by exception, right? Like, yeah, you've got the service part, and that's great. But like when you've got that full complement, that's, that's kind of what we're looking for. So is, is that helpful? Is that kind of answer the question? I think so. Uh, we just got another in the uh, chat box as well from Abelardo who asked, could this internship help some student who would love to work with the military as a civilian and then potentially putting on the uniform? Yeah, for sure. You know, and th that's a great question. And I think, um, you know, uh, you know, we've seen that as well, right? You know, and, and we don't necessarily, I want to make some, one thing clear here, because like, we're not like recruiters for the military. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, we're not trying to like, you know, have you do this program and then eventually have you go see a recruiter and sign up. It's more that like, hey, we're bringing in just some incredible talent and applying them against some wicked problems, right? And I get to say that because I'm from Massachusetts. Um, you know, like that's the kind of stuff that we're, we're kind of looking for here. So you coming in, you know, as, as a fellow over the summer, working on these tough problems, making a difference, and then a few different things. Like we like to look at this as like a, like a, like sort of like a buffet of opportunity afterwards, right? You know, like this is, like I mentioned, one program inside of Ensign uh, that would be available to you, but there's others as well. And, and uh, we can talk about all those later on, but like we hope you have a great great experience over the fellowship. And then maybe you start to think about some other opportunities in your career. If you decide to go on active duty or become a reservist, like that's great, you know, again, not our intent uh, specifically, but that's a good outcome. Um, but other things, we have another pro program called Hirethon, right? You know, where we take, again, really talented college and university students looking to make a career inside of the DOD or else, or else work there temporarily. And we take commands that have direct hiring authority and, and that are looking to fill open positions. And then we bring really talented students together at the same place where you can interview and make on the spot hires and offers. Um, and, and so that that's an outcome as well. So to that, to that end, um, you know, that's kind of the, the, some of the opportunities you can have is like, yeah, you can come here, you can work for a summer, make an impact, but then, you know, what other pathways can you take afterwards? What other kind of hiring opportunities are there? There's a lot available to you. So I hope that helped uh, answer that question. And to pick up off of that, we've seen kind of a number of former fellows from last summer who, you know, worked with a given project sponsor. One in the top mm -hmm. of my mind is uh, the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Crane, Indiana. Uh, she, one of those fellows is actually now going to begin working full-time after the completion of her master's degree in May. So that is, yeah. you know, one example in particular. Uh, that said, Dana, we're getting a question, um, and Michael as well. Um, we can open, I'll open this up to both of you, about if the program was held in person, where would it be held? So I figured this would be a great opportunity to talk about that and also potentially dive into a bit on, okay, what does my life look on, like on a day-to-day -day basis as a fellow? What sort of work am I doing? Uh, you know, how am I communicating with my sponsor? What's the work I'm doing on my project? Um, you know, what sort of resources and, uh, you know, enrichment opportunities you guys going to make available uh, for me? Yeah. Why don't you take that one, Alex? Like you, you get you, you, the day-to-day -day one. That's that's a good question. Day-to-day -day one. Yes. Um, so, and to, to actually, Anna, why don't you um, hit the uh, in-person first point? The in-person yeah. point first. Yeah. So, like, the, the he, he, it's a really good question, the internship, um, you know, if, if it's held in person. I will tell you guys first, like, the ideal state. Um, and unfortunately, COVID gets a vote here um, and the way things kind of materialize over the next couple of months here. But so here, here's the way this program is designed to be run, 
right? Is it's full-time, it's in-person and it's paid, okay? So what that means to you is, again, we source the problems from all around the country, the entire country, right? You know, that is no kidding. I don't want to get your hopes up, but from Hawaii, you know, to Florida, everywhere in between, right? Um, and we've had problem sponsor. We have a problem sponsor right now in Hawaii. We had a problem there last summer, um, you know, in, in, a, in a project there. So that that's that's exciting. So what we try and do is like, okay, we match first and foremost. We, we get the, the, the problem from the customer. What do they need? What skill sets do they need to solve this problem and, and, and for us to deliver that prototype to them? That's first and foremost. And then we say, okay, look, what skill sets do we have inside the applicant pool? And then how do we bring them to that, right? Are they close by or are they far apart? And if they are far apart, if we got to put you on a plane and send you out there for the summer, we will do that, right? Um, and, and what that means to you is that uh, we will pay for your travel, like obviously to and from the location, um, but if you have to provide your own housing while you're there. So that might be an Airbnb, that might be renting a room, that might mean sometimes on base they have options for you to live there as well, not always, um, but we can work through all the logistics of what that what that looks like. Um, so in the ideal state, you know, like you are, we are, the problem may come or the project may come from anywhere in the country. And one thing we ask you to be, and we go through our interview process here too, we'll ask you to be open to, you know, sort of, are you open to going anywhere in the country potentially and, and living there for the summer and working on that, on that project? Um, if not, that's okay. You know, we can look to find things that are, that are closer to you, but it might mean relocating. It might not, it might mean that it's not, you know, within driving distance of where, you know, you live during the summer, you might have to get on a, on a, on a plane or drive, you know, a considerable distance and stay somewhere else for the summer. So that, that that's a thing. So I can't tell you right now that like, here's the five or six or location where it might be, I will tell you that there will be upwards of 60 to 80 um, different potential locations where you could end up this summer. Um, so, and that includes every, everywhere from, you know, the East Coast to the West Coast and, uh, you know, so basically the lower 48, um, maybe Alaska, maybe Hawaii, you know, that's, that's the range of opportunities, which is pretty, pretty broad. Um, so that's, that's, uh, as, and, and I'll, I'll just kind of say this too, like the COVID thing is, continues to be a thing. Um, and we are working through different courses of action right now of what it might look like this summer, um, everywhere from like fully virtual to a mix of, of in-person and virtual, depending on how, like this, cause to us, uh, and, I, and I think everybody here would agree with this too. It's like your safety is really paramount to us and we will not put you in any sort of harm's way, um, when it comes to, especially this, this virus and Way things are unfolding so that's our first and most important planning factor as we as we go through this so because of that um and as things kind of continue to change again the, the, the way we deliver this over the summer might be a little bit different so but anyways i'll stop there and alex um you want to take through the day-to-day -day. i think that's a great great thing to tease or roll into sure absolutely so um you know as Dana mentioned last summer, I think we had 49 teams in total across roughly 150 individuals. So there's kind of each team sort of set its own pace of work and sort of what their days and what their weeks looked like. I will say the vast majority of teams began their day with either a you know daily quick one-off half hour stand-up meeting just with the three, four, five individuals on their team or a daily stand-up meeting with their problem sponsor in particular. So in that situation, the problem sponsor is making him or herself available to you as the fellow to you know sort of walk through in more detail uh, these sort of intricacies and more granular details of the problem statement in particular. And again, you know, just as I said, you know, making themselves available um, to kind of help with some of the larger project management, management day in, day out. Like, okay, here's what needs to be done at the end of tomorrow versus the end of the week versus the end of two weeks into the future. That said, um, you will also be interacting very closely uh, with fantastic people like Michael Hard. Uh, Michael is on our regional network team at Ensign. And, you know, as Dana mentioned earlier, he really brings to bear a lot of sort of that experience in the sort of venture and startup world. Um, you know, bringing that knowledge, bringing that experience and expertise to bear on your problems. Um, you know, of course, kind of ingratiating uh, your, you into his network as well. Um, you know, that said, uh, we also additionally offer a number of enrichment opportunities that Dana has kind of touched on. Uh, we bring in a, you know, fairly big wig uh, into Speak every Friday. Um, just a couple months ago, we actually had Palmer Lucky, the um, sort of mastermind behind the uh, a lot of ARVR technology, and of course, the founder of Andro Industries as well. Um, in addition to that, we have a number of sort of career roundtables and career development sort of, you know, discussions that we set up throughout the course of the cohort to kind of give you an idea into like, okay, here's where I can see myself fitting in to sort of this larger national security service sphere 
uh, that we discuss. You know, we've talked a lot about various operational commands across the country, various sort of military labs and, you know, surface warfare centers, just again, to give you that picture of like, okay, here are the opportunities that are out there and here's where you might fit in. Uh, Michael, did I miss anything there? Is there something you might want to touch on in terms of the day in, day out? I know you interacted very closely with a lot of San Diego State students last summer. Yeah, I would just, thank you, Alex. Um, I would just say like one of the reasons why that this is one of my most favorite uh, programs at Ensign and specifically for uh, SDSU students is that in typical internships or typical uh, summer gigs, uh, oftentimes like the work that students can find is like somewhat menial, like it's, it's like the, the opportunity for impact like is relatively low. Um, from our standpoint, it's actually quite the opposite. Like we really do throw you uh, um, it, you know, and, and uh, guide you and teach you how to swim, but we, we do uh, uh, throw you into the deep end, uh, like of, um, uh, but, you know, but we're there with you the whole entire time in terms of um, exposing you to an actual real world problem. Uh, and we connect you directly to the end users uh, within the military that are faced with that problem. And then we help you, uh, uh, guide you and teach you, uh, you, you know, Silicon Valley best practices and uh, best practices from industry to solve that problem at rapid speed, uh, which is something that often doesn't happen um, in uh, in DoD. So the the results that you can produce uh, for that summer um, and in that summer experience are things that you could potentially uh, take with you for the the really like for the rest of your life, uh, which is really really neat to see. Um, and I just wanted to give a couple of examples, if that's okay, Dan and Alex, like the different types of students that may be on the call, um, you know, for students that have any, uh, that are in the, the college of, um, of uh, the Fowler College of Business, um, you know, if you have any uh, interest in entrepreneurship or business in general, the whole world of uh, innovation is basically turning upside down on its head, like no longer can large organizations like the Department of Defense or other large companies or even large nonprofits be able to compete in today's uh, world by making uh, really large bets on strategic initiatives that may take several years to turn around. Um, uh, to compete in today's world, it's all about understanding um, uh, challenges and problems, being able to accurately scope them correctly, and then being able to solve them quickly within days or weeks. Uh, that's really what's needed to, to survive uh, and, to, and to thrive like in today's um, uh, global markets, but also from a defense uh, perspective as well. So we really teach you all of those techniques and strategies and, uh, and processes. Um, and so for any uh, uh, business students, it's a really awesome opportunity for you. Uh, for College of Sciences students, uh, we've had some really good um, uh, case studies from last year where there was the, the, uh, the office that manages all of naval aviation across uh, around the world. They have a really tough time with understanding uh, when certain types of uh, aircraft break down and need certain maintenance and uh, uh, over others. And there is a team that we uh, were able to recruit from across the U.S. Uh, and different universities that worked on that problem. And the solution that they developed uh, was focused on uh, fuel cells that are in uh, uh, F-18s, uh, like so these uh, fighter uh, F-18 fighter planes stationed around the world, uh, it turns out that fuel cells, uh, uh, there's a fuel cell module like within each of these F-18s and uh, that's one of the parts that breaks down a lot. But there is a, a student team that actually developed an analytic solution, that uh, a predictive analytic solution that was really helpful in terms of identifying uh, which aircraft may be at an elevated risk for needing uh, uh, hydrogen fuel cell repair. And uh, that solution went all the way up to the P, like to a, a program executive office level, and uh, which is really really awesome to see that. And that student team was able to influence like essentially the the direction that that office is going to take to to solve that that problem that they have, which is really neat to see. Um, another example is that a, a student team was uh, uh, this may speak to uh, a College of Sciences students. There was a student team that developed a. COVID tracking solution that could identify sailors and Marines like most likely uh, at risk of de uh, developing COVID and uh, or become, uh, uh, getting an infection. And once they became infected, uh, we'd be able to quickly understand who uh, they uh, live and work with. And that solution was actually uh, also got elevated up really, really quickly uh, within uh, at the flag officer level uh, to 
uh, um, to a, a, a really fantastic uh, local admiral here that's uh, looking to, um, uh, to advance that solution even more. Um, engineering problems, like we have lots of engineering problems like ro uh, robotics, uh, drones, uh, a counter drone is something that's really interesting. There's so many different types of, uh, of drones that are out publicly in the market now. And it's really, really easy for someone to fly a really inexpensive drone uh, in a, uh, around or uh, around a very expensive asset like an airplane or like on a, uh, on a runway. Um, and it basically uh, is uh, a really, really counter drone is a really, really hard, uh, very interesting problem set that combines uh, all sorts of disciplines. Um, and then for any students that are in uh, the College of Education or maybe the uh, uh, College of uh, Arts and Letters, like we really need uh, your help too, to help us be thinking through like, hey, are we really solving the right problem here? Uh, once we identify that, um, you know, are we really coming up with the right solution that, uh, um, you know, that can best address uh, a given problem? So by the end of the summer, it's like, you know, no matter like what your background, interests, mindsets are, like we really need to maximize the intellectual diversity that the uh, Department of Defense is exposed to. And we, we really need uh, all sorts of uh, students from uh, all across all majors, all backgrounds, mindsets uh, at SDSU. Um, lastly, uh, I, I didn't hear this, so I just wanted to mention it. Uh, if you are looking for a summer fellowship, uh, uh, good news, like we, uh, we, you know, you can apply to both a full-time uh, and paid uh, summer fellowship, um, but also say, for example, if you already have a summer job already lined up, um, or maybe even a full-time job, uh, um, a full-time employee job uh, lined up, and, or maybe you're taking classes and you just, for whatever reason, you can't commit full time to working in, uh, um, uh, as an X-Force fellow over the summer, you can also apply to be an X-Force fellow uh, uh, part-time and on a flexible, uh, like which is a much more flexible way. And uh, that's a, a volunteer, but at least it's much more flexible for uh, however many hours that you might have uh, during the week. And applicants uh, can apply to both. So I think that's a really smart uh, safety net to apply to both of those opportunities simultaneously. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it for me, guys. Um, yeah, just wanted to kind of mention some of the different, some more different types of problems and how they may relate to the whole SDSU community. So I'm uh, seeing a couple questions pop up in here too. Uh, one is a question regarding sort of IP protection and the rights to that. Um, you will retain full IP for all the work you do over the course of the summer. We have your contracts. Um, you'll be listed as a subcontractor, technically speaking, drafted up such that you will retain all of those patent rights, copyrights, uh, product designs, what have you. Um, actually, and this is something that I can speak to, we had a team from the Stevens Institute of Technology out in New Jersey that has since um, you know, formed an entire company around their counter UAS uh, product that they built out this summer. So that is just one sort of real world example um, from this last uh, cohort. Uh, Eduardo asked how many hours for full-time. Um, that is your standard 40. Um, and part-time is kind of up to you. Uh, we leave the sort of volunteer service, that sort of part-time route um, up to the individual. It usually lands somewhere between the kind of two and 10 hour time frame. Um, and then Brittany Seidemann asked, uh, if we had sort of any want or desire for students coming from the School of Public Health. Uh, Dana, do you want to take this? I know we had a couple uh, master's uh, public health students last year that you could potentially speak about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great question, Brittany. And um, the answer is yes, you know, for sure. And uh, so one, it's a lot of it's driven by, you know, what projects that we get from the problem. So it's kind of a two-sided business model, right? You know, like where we've got on one side is the is the um, the project sponsors and what type of projects we're getting submitted. Um, but we did have and we do have public health type problems um, and, and some of them actively going on in some of our other programs right now. Um, so the answer is yes, definitely. And and, uh, and, and so when you apply, um, and I hope you do, Brittany, um, you know, definitely put that sort of in your, in your, um, um, you know, in your resume, your CV and, and, and some of the things uh, when you, we have a, a part in there that talks about your, uh, like what skill sets you have. So make sure you put those things in there. Um, and for sure, yeah, we're always, always looking for that skill set. And then um, Sean Regabom is asking, if I've worked at a variety of university labs outside of America, in addition to being an American university student and a citizen, will that be a security clearance issue? 
Uh, no. And, and Sean, Sean, just so I understand, like you are, so I'll throw this out there for everybody to just understand the only like hard requirement that we have uh, that we have to meet this requirement is uh, you got to be a U.S. citizen. So if I understood it correctly, Sean, like you are a U.S. citizen mm -hmm. um, or a green card holder and a permanent resident, like as long as those two things, yeah, good, uh, then you're all set, um, Sean, like that's that's fine. You can have worked outside of the United States. That's not a problem at all. And one of the things that, that, um, that I didn't mention before, but all of our projects are unclassified um, and that is by design uh, for exactly that reason. Low barrier to entry on both like our applicant side and our for our customer side on the government that we don't have to go through any kind of like major clearance issues we don't have to get you all security security issues because one that's both time intensive and cost uh pretty costly to do um so all are unclassified you know so day one you can start work you don't have to go through a you know background check or security clearance or anything like that as long as you are a u.s citizen or a green card holder and permanent resident those are the only requirements we have so yeah, it, you know, on that, it's like uh, for any students that may be on the call or maybe listening to this in the future, if for whatever reason that you are not a U.S. citizen, like I want to connect with you anyway uh, to figure out one, just, you know, how I can support you and then uh, in whatever career path that you might have. And if that career path, uh, that ideal career path touches upon national security in any way, uh, I would really love to help you find something else uh, like within, uh, you know, national security innovation. Uh, if that's something that's uh, of interest, uh, you know, to you. So, I, so bottom line, I'm I'm here to support you know students from uh, you know wherever uh, they happen to have born in life, and uh, um, you know would be really grateful for the opportunity to and uh, humble to uh, take care of all of you. So, um, yeah. Th by the way, there is one uh, IP question. So whoever asked that IP question uh, strikes me as some as someone that's potentially entrepreneurial, and uh, if uh, um, you know, we're really big advocates uh, for helping our students' teams uh, start uh, and helping our, our summer fellows uh, start uh, uh, startups or businesses on the side. Like I myself, like I have a decade of uh, startup experience in Silicon Valley with, uh, and some of those companies ended up uh, uh, doing uh, really well. At the same time, like there's nothing like the intellectual stimulation that at least I've received, like when it comes to working on real world uh, national security problems. But if there's any of you that I can help uh, or that decide to apply and that are interested in entrepreneurship uh, and specifically, you know, entrepreneurship related to national security, uh, um, you know, would love to help you start companies. And, uh, and just as one other note, a lot of the problems that we bring are what are called uh, dual use in nature. So they're going to have both a uh, military application as well as a, a civilian or a, a industry uh, application. Um, and these are all the fun things like healthcare, uh, you know, diagnostics, uh, medical devices, uh, smart cities, uh, robotics, and many of the other examples that I gave before. So, and uh, I've got a question from Sean uh, regarding um, if we had any idea about the upcoming um, projects in the kind of biomedical sphere. Um, I will say um, I just reviewed the problem submission from the sponsor. Um, I was a classics major in college, so forgive me if I absolutely butcher this, um, but it is about. Uh, the utilization of commercially available skin tissue surrogates. So I am not too entirely certain on what that means, uh, but I do know from experience last summer, we had a group out of Georgia Tech in particular, it's just where those fellows kind of happened to come from. And they were working with the 3rd Battalion, uh, 75th Rangers on traumatic brain injuries, particularly those that result um, from mortar fire. Um, but you know, this year I would imagine we will have you know quite a bit of problem statements in the sort of biomedical sphere, um, given COVID and you know, given sort of the onus and sort of importance that that is being placed kind of across the DoD writ large. Yeah, and uh, and Alex, like I'm actually uh, uh, working with a lot of the local and uh, and actually beyond local uh, like healthcare, like DoD healthcare uh, medical centers uh, and uh, uh, like health related like uh, research. Uh, entities like within DOD that are hopefully will be sponsoring a lot more biomedical uh, type uh, type problems. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of the startups that I worked on, by the way, were uh, um, just happened to be medical device related as well. Yeah, and, and to uh, to that point too, um, the, on the BME question, Alex mentions uh, one of our teams from Georgia Tech that worked on blast exposure and traumatic brain injury um, with the uh, 75th Ranger Regiment. 
from uh, Fort Benning, and so I just dropped a. Uh, oh, you already did it too, Alex, right? Yeah, you put uh, the, yeah, you only said it at the panelists. Oh, sorry. Yep. So I, I uh, that, that's out there to all you, so you can kind of get a, a feel for what the teams did, what they worked on, what the solution looked like. And that project's actually continuing to go on right now as well. So kind of a, a cool, um, cool example to give you, you guys an idea of what, what, what some of the problems look like. And uh, we had another question as to where um, sort of a lot of the teams come from. It just so happens that we probably had about 10 fellows from Georgia Tech last year. It also mm -hmm. just so happens, given just the number of operational commands down sort of in that southeast region, that a good bit of our problem sponsors come from that area as well. So we are by no means um, sort of limited or locked in on just that region or just that school. Um, that was just sort of the example that uh, came across the top of my head at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not seeing any more um, questions pop into the Q&A box, but, you know, if I can sort of give, um, you know, my little piece of advice here. I just graduated school in May, so, oh, we just got another one. Uh, I'll answer that real quick before I dive in. Okay. Um, in our application, can we add any sort of service opportunities that we will do this Christmas, over Christmas break? And I think the answer to that is absolutely. Um, but feel free to apply early, apply now, and, you know, definitely be sure to sort of hit either Dana Michael or myself up with any sort of amendations uh, that you may have or stuff that you want to add. Um, again, I would also recommend bringing that up sort of in the interview process. But uh, now that hopefully the questions um, have halted coming in, I'll, I'll give my little spiel here. Um, you know, as a recent graduate of school, I sort of, you know, had several internship experiences throughout the course of, you know, my three or four summers. Um, and, and I didn't really, you know, I, I found the work to be very men menial, um, not very meaningful at all. It was a lot of coffee runs. It was a lot of digging through Excel sheets to you know, pull little particular items here and there. Um, you know, I know from experience helping manage this program last summer, um, you know, in my first go around, you know, that is not this at all. You're going to have the opportunity to, you know, not only build fantastic relationships sort of with your problem sponsor and with the other indiv individuals that sit on your team, but you are going to be able to take these skills that, you know, you've worked really, really hard to develop on your end and actually, you know, put them to action and, and make something that is going to, you know, make your problem sponsor's lives better. Uh, the problem sponsor themselves and also the men and women, um, you know, serving under them um, in some capacity. And then when you add that to the fact that, you know, we are going to, you know, make ourselves available at Ensign and, you know, offer a number of enrichment opportunities and professional development opportunities, um, you know, it really comes together in an absolutely fantastic fashion uh, for this fellowship. And if uh, that's sort of my uh, little call to action there, uh, if uh, Dana and Michael, you want to wrap us up here. Yeah, sure. Uh, I just, uh, again, just, uh, you know, thanks all of you for, for taking the time today to, you um, you know, because I know it's a, it's a busy time of year and there's a lot going on, as I mentioned right right off the start. So we appreciate you all taking the time to do this, and it's uh, it's great to see so many people on, online. Um, one, if you, just a, a very you know transactional thing, if you have more questions, and I just put it into the answer the question from Sean there, but reach out to myself, Michael, um, and Alex anytime. Any questions that you have, happy to do either just email or hop on a video call, whatever is convenient for you. Um, so any more questions we didn't answer here today, ha happy to, you know, arrange a different time to chat, uh, whatever means or mode is, is convenient for you all. Um, and the second thing too, is, is that, that, uh, I really love this program and I'm really passionate about it because I know it makes a difference and I've seen it. And like I said, I'm still in the reserves, uh, in the Marine Corps myself and, and the work that you all do like helps make you know, the lives of my Marines better, right? You know, so that's why I'm really so passionate about this because it does make a difference. Um, and the skill sets that you have and the experience that you have, the knowledge that you have uh, really can be put to use to like serve our country. And so again, thanks, thankful for you all being on here. And I uh, look forward to seeing your applications roll through and, and uh, appreciate your time. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, deadline is uh, 31 December. <laughs> FYI, so get those, uh, get those applications in and then um, and if you guys have any questions, again, like, please just reach out to me. Like, I'm, uh, like, a big part of my role is to be a resource to all, you know, SDSU students. Um, uh, so if, if I can, um, if I can ever be of a, a service um, and to be helpful to any of you, uh, please let me know. I, I'd be uh, delighted to, to help out. And right. uh, sort of, I'm seeing a couple questions regarding where you might find the application information. Um, it is fairly easy, straightforward to get to. Um, go to www.ensign.us. 
navigate to the National Service Portfolio, navigate to Xforce, and there should be a big sort of apply here button. If not, you can find Ensign on Handshake and apply that way as well. I'll actually, uh, I'll send the link out uh, just to make things easier for the students here. Um, just one sec here. Here's the link. Bear with me. Oops. Sorry, I'm going to put this in the general chat. All right. Yeah, we posted also on Handshake. Yeah, we posted on Handshake as, as uh, Alex may have mentioned here. And then also, um, uh, yeah, and if you email me, I'll, I'll be happy to send it out too. Yeah, thank you all. Yeah, great. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, if there's no more questions, thanks all for your time today. And uh, yeah, like we said, have a, have a great holiday season and look forward to seeing your applications. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, take care. Thanks. Have a great day.